Hi everyone, I'm Krillius, Team Racing Productions MC and producer. And today I have with me, running for DC Council, Ward 4, Janice Lewis George. How are you? Good, yeah, good afternoon. Good. How are you? I'm doing well. I am doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. You know, tell me, introduce yourself, give us a little bit about your background. Yeah, um, uh, as you said, um, my name is Janice Lewis George. I mm -hmm. am a third generation Washingtonian, uh, born and raised right here in Ward 4, where I'm running for council. Mm -hmm. I'm a proud graduate of all DC public schools, I'm a proud uh, having previously served on the school board. Um, currently serving as a Democratic State Committee woman and Ward 4 Democrats Executive Board member, mm -hmm. and most recently serving as an Assistant Attorney General at the Office of the Attorney General, uh, the, the other racing, call racing, <laughs> uh, in his office. And yes. so, um, you know, for me, uh, this election uh, is so important and it's such a critical election um, because I like to say working families are on the ballot. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have so much at stake in this election. And so having been uh, born and raised by a single mom who was a U.S. postal worker, still is a U.S. postal worker, actually serving on the front lines right now. Well, in thanks for her service, especially yeah, during you. this time, of course. Yeah, serving right now in the crisis, uh, right now um, in the front lines right now. Um, it's, you know, everything that has been at stake in, is at stake right now for our community is at stake in this election, um, which is why I um, am feel it's so important um, and I'm running to serve and be a voice for the people of my community and of this city. Of course, thanks so much. And you know, you as you mentioned the crisis, let me know, how are you handling the crisis? How has the pandemic changed, you know, your campaign? How has it altered it? Yeah, um, obviously our campaign has been a grassroots people powered movement campaign and mm -hmm. a part of grassroots is being on the ground. You know, we always talk about boots on the ground, being able to yes. do our um, and so, you know, uh, when COVID-19 happened, we wanted to do our part as a campaign to, um, you know, lessen the curve. So we stopped immediately doing outdoor canvassing um, and knocking on doors to do our part. Um, and so we switched to having to do digital. Um, ah. so what we've been doing is uh, phone banking. Um, mm -hmm. We've been calling phones. We've made over 11,000 calls thus far. Um, we've been sending out postcards. So we've had our volunteers writing to their neighbors about why they're supporting uh, Janice Lewis George for Ward 4. Um, and we've sent over about 10,000 postcards. Um, and we've been able to still distribute over 1,000 yard signs at the same time. We've been hold, holding virtual meet and greets every day. Mm -hmm. um, I have two virtual meet and greets uh, um, this evening. Um, and then we've also been doing town halls on various issues. So every Tuesday we do a town hall um, where we discuss an uh, issue. Uh, last week it was education. Uh, coming up this upcoming week, we'll be talking about uh, talking to our healthcare workers mm -hmm. um, and deciding what's so important. So my team um, is a group of organizers. And so organizers uh, have this really unique ability to just adapt and make a change and yes. really be able to uh, change the way we've been doing it. And the important thing is also, you know, before we even were able to go inside before COVID-19, we started this campaign really early. So we got to knock 30,000 doors awesome. before. Yeah. So it was great that we started so early in um, last August because we got to knock 30,000 doors even before that. So we switched to all digital um, mm. and we recognize the, you know, digital divide and some families not having Wi-Fi internet um, as mm -hmm. we see in our education right now, uh, which is why phone calls have been our number one um, way to reach voters uh, because most of our uh, voters have at least landline phones. So, um, you know, we've still been working really hard, switching to digital and finding innovative ways to reach our voters. Um, we've also been doing community check-in calls. Um, we have team members who are on call to help um, individuals in our community. Um, what that's looked like is sometimes we have people run to the grocery store for some of our seniors, run to uh, the pharmacy to pick up prescriptions for some of our seniors, um, and also help navigate some of the issues with unemployment insurance, which can be really difficult. So our team is on the phone every day, checking in with neighbors and seeing if we can help and help them in any way, um, which has been really helpful and beneficial um, in a way we've come together as a community. Ah, that is great. That is definitely great. And I like how you mentioned that you guys really transitioned into that digital virtual space. Because I mean, 
here at Team Racing, we've done the same. You know, we do events and shows, but now we've really transitioned into this online content. And speaking of online content, you have done an interview with us before. Absolutely. That, yes, that is up on our YouTube channel. And I hope all our viewers go and check that out as well. Check the link in the description. As well as, tell me, what has changed since the last time we interviewed you? Yeah, so many um, uh, amazing things have happened. Our campaign has just continued to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, the momentum has continued to grow. As I said, uh, you know, we've already made 11,000 calls, sent 10,000 oh. postcards. But, you know, what I think is most important that has changed is that we've gotten over 20 endorsements. Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't just get endorsements from just any organizations. What we got endorsements from were frontline workers. Mm -hmm. And so during this COVID-19 crisis, you've seen who step up, the teachers, right? Yes. Um, they know how critical is important for have leadership that understands what they're going through and supports them. And so we were proud to get the Washington Teachers Union endorsement. We also saw on the front line our transit workers, our bus drivers. Yes. And so we got the endorsement of the American Transit Union and bus uh, as well and so we see them working SEIU came out endorsed us they're healthcare workers and we see our healthcare workers on the front line every day Sierra Club our environmental justice groups came out and endorsed us mm. and so what you see right now um, in war four and what has been so important is that uh, the frontline workers the essential workers who have been uh, stepping up during this COVID crisis whose families have been impacted in a great way have joined our campaign and partner with us because they understand that this is a people powered movement and we have to change our leadership to get some things done in our community we can't go back to the same old same old Right. Yes. In the yes. COVID nineteen crisis, the breaks in systems and education to help yes. care, to jobs and living wages, and so I think everyone now sees what's at stake and how we can't go back to leadership anymore. So um, the biggest thing that's happened with our team is we are proud to be supported by the essential workers and by the frontline workers who are partnering with us and fighting with us um, to win this election on June second. A hundred percent. And you know, I like that you mentioned that you know, we're, we won't be able to go back to what was before. We should use this opportunity and learn from this opportunity to create a better future for ourselves and to, you know, really lean into, you know, making the system better because right now, you know, the system is failing a lot of people. And one thing the mayor has said, and she's encouraging everyone to make sure that they do their um, mail-in ballots and all of that. Tell me about that. What are your thoughts on voting in 2020? Yeah, so it's important that we have the movement to vote safe DC. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're asking everyone to request their uh, ballots. Um, mm -hmm. The one thing I was disappointed with was the fact that people had to request ballots. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen in other jurisdictions, such as Maryland, that uh, they have made a pledge to send ballots just to every registered voter in the uh -huh. primary. Um, and so our voters have to go the extra step of requesting a ballot. Now, there's six different ways to do that, and I'm happy that they've made six different ways to do that. I found the most helpful way is actually to download the Vote for DC app um, and request your ballot that way. Mm -hmm. um, but I do wish that encumbrance wasn't there and they just sent ballots to all um, of registered voters. That would be so much uh, more helpful and uh, make sure that everyone has it. Um, I've signed on with a few other uh, campaigns to ask for a fair, accessible election. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the things we meant by that is we need Board of Elections to really have the same GOTV strategy we have as a campaign to have that about voting. So I want to hear about ways to vote and how to request your ballot on the radio. I want to hear about it on our local TV stations. Um, I want to see, you know, everyone come together to make sure that uh, there's going to be access to the ballot for everyone. And I'm really concerned about our seniors making it to the ballots, uh, I mean, making it to the polls or knowing how to request their ballots and being able to have access to that. So I would love to see, you know, ballots, you know, dropped off to our senior centers mm -hmm. um, by Board of Elections. So that way they don't have to. We've uh, reduce the amount of election uh, spaces for people to vote to 20. Mm -hmm. um, three will actually be in our Ward 4 neighborhoods. Um, but obviously, we're asking people, instead of going to one of those three uh, spaces, uh, we are asking them to just request their ballots and then vote by mail. Um, so I'm, you know, I think we will see everyone come together. Everyone, I think, knows what's at stake in this election. Mm -hmm. um, and so if Board of Elections and D.C. government and each and every one of us, every organization, I've been saying this to all the Democratic organizations as well, get out the vote, get out the vote. It's mm -hmm. going to be so much more critical now to get out the vote and then to hold our leadership accountable to making sure uh, that vote um, is fair and accessible for everyone.
Of course, of course. And, you know, let our viewers know, how can they support your campaign and how can they, you know, keep up with what you're doing and the campaign? Absolutely. So please, um, uh, we need as many volunteers as possible to make even more phone calls. Mm -hmm. And so please go to Janice4DC.com. That's J-A-N-E-E-S-E -E -E, and the number four DC.com. You can also follow uh, my Instagram and Twitter, which is also Janice4DC. Mm -hmm. um, we keep uh, it updated and also follow our Facebook page and like our Facebook page as well. We are um, doing phone banking every single day of the week. And so if you can give an hour, 20 minutes to make 30 phone calls, it makes all the difference. So please uh, go to the website, Janice4DC.com, sign up for our events. Um, also sign up for our virtual town halls where we be discussing issues you care about. If you're an undecided Decided voter, we want you to come on Janice for DC side, the People Power campaign. So please come to one of our uh, virtual town halls and listen uh, to to what my vision is for DC and for War Four. Awesome, awesome, and Janice, thank you so much for joining me today. It was a pleasure. Thank you, always. Thank you, such a pleasure. Of course, you too, and to our viewers, thank you for watching.